Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. Dear students, today uh, we go for the revision. And the first thing which comes in the mind is the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor, which is kind of important, which may come in exam and which is, you know, sure shot something from this will come in exam. So, um, let's take it on. And uh, uh, today, you just watch this video and tomorrow I will take uh, the exam of the same question. So, this will be now alternate. Uh, one day I will do something, either I will use some video or something else. And next day, you will have an exam of the same thing, what we have done, say for example, today. Okay, okay, so this is the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor and with some, uh, you know, uh, details with the peripheral interfacing, like uh, many ICs uh, which, which we have, like 8284, 8282, and so on. So your 8086 uh, microprocessor, it was an improvement over the 8085 microprocessor which was you know in 1976 we had this and in 1978 we actually um, updated the 8085 to the 8086 uh, microprocessor okay so it's an enhanced version of intel 8085 microprocessor okay it is it is a 16 bit we have discussed that the register size and the data bus actually is 16 bit Okay, and it is actually made of HMOS. Okay, uh, it's it's also called the HMOS microprocessor, uh, which is high speed metal oxide semiconductor. High speed metal oxide semiconductor. This is what we used in the eight nine eight six. It was built on a single semiconductor chip, so everything was on it. That's why we call it as a microprocessor, and it was built on a single uh, semiconductor chip and it was packaged in a 40 pin IC package uh, like this we had a 40 pins 20 on this side and 20 on the other side this is also called a dual inline package dip DIP this is called as a dual inline hit student here dual inline package which means mm, we have dual inline package means we have the pins on the one side and the other side also At the same time you know uh, the pins like this are on the other side also from the other side which say for this is transparent you can see these pins that's called a dual inline package this, this thing dual means two sides so we have 20 pins on this side and 20 pins on this side so that's called total of 40 pins and we had uh, the three versions of 8086 processor you know de depending upon the clock speed the first which came in the market had a 5 megahertz speed so we had a 5 megahertz uh, the clock speed and then 80862 which comes up with a clock speed of 8 megahertz okay and then the next version 80863 it comes up with the 10 megahertz clock speed so we had a um, different clock speed uh, processors three basically 5 8 and 10 megahertz uh, processor okay and uh, the this microprocessor 8086 has a uh, one additional feature that is it can be used in two modes okay what's called as a minimum mode or the maximum mode we'll read about this in a in a bit in a in a, uh, in a shortly okay uh, basically what that depends that means is it can work either as a single processor or it can work together with other processors together as a multi-processor unit okay so in a maximum mode we got actually basically two modes one is a minimum mode and one is called the maximum mode in the minimum mode it acts as a single processor okay and in the max mode we can use uh, the multi-processor configuration so that we can have the you know high performance so we can put up the multi-processors uh, together and work together to do the multitasking and all okay that is called the max mode As you can see here, the Intel 8086 uh, microprocessor, okay, 
three versions we have 8086, 8086 second, 8MHz and 8086 one, 10MHz and it consists of around 29,000 transistors and one of the most important feature is that the bus here we have the address bus and the data bus address bus you know uh, which has to uh, fetch the memory addresses if you have memory it has addresses depending upon how many bits you have that much of big memory you can have so you want to you know support ram for example use some old laptop they say hey i have only 2 gb ram but if i want more i cannot it depends upon how many address bits you have in a processor so processor how many addresses it can uh, how many addresses it can generate for example if the address bit is only 3 bits long so if if you have only 3 bits for address in, in, in my processor so at the max it can locate is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 that is eight locations so if it's a three two raised power three locations so my memory can be only having eight bits eight bit long okay so I can if I have only three bits for address that means I can have only one um, byte memory I cannot have more than one byte memory because I cannot address more than that. So I can name this as 000, name as this as 001 and so on. So I can have only 8 bit long uh, addresses, right? But if I have in my 8086, here the addresses are 20 lines and my data is only 16 line. Okay, data is 69 because registers inside my 8 nodes processors are only 16 bit long. We know it already. They are 16 bit long. So 8 bits high and 8 bit low. Okay, like for example, AX register, it's got AH and AL, 88 bits. So data can be 16 bits only. That's why for the data bus, the bus means uh, the lines which take up the data from to and fro. And we also need an address bus which can select the memory where we have for example the data we want to select that using the address bus okay but the address here is 20 bits that is uh, we should note it down so that means how many how big my memory can be okay I can have a memory 2 raised power 20 because if I have a 20 bit address that means my processor can address only up to 2 raised power 20 that is 1 MB so you cannot have more than 1 MB of memory RAM right so that is why in case of 8086 we had only 1 MB RAM today we have in a GB's okay uh, that because our processor has a, a lot of uh, lines address lines and also it do uh, it has uh, we use different techniques uh, to access the memory that I'm not discussing here I'm just discussing the Intel 8086 and it has more than 20,000 instructions wherein we can you can do the multiplication and division in those times doing multiplication and division was something you know some some hack of a job which was done by the 8086 microprocessor so i will ask you a question here okay I, this is a question for you we are saying 8086 then we say mic mupi microprocessor so what do you mean by microprocessor processor we know but why are we using micro with it so what is the microprocessor you have to answer this question okay put up in a comment box just search for it and then in the comments write what do you mean by microprocessor now this is the pin diagram of the Intel 8086 we will talk about each and every bit every pin of it and it's functioning like I told you that it's, it comes in a dual inline package DIP dual inline package that means it has pins on this side and also on the other side of it okay uh, we had 20 on this side and 20 on this side as you could see here from 1 to 20 on this side and then 21 to 40 on this side okay 21 to 40 and 1 to 20 is on this side so 20 pins are on this side and 20 pins are on this side okay and we are not having uh, say I, I told you that data bus is 16 bit long and my address bus is 20 bit long but I am not having 20 bit separate and 16 bit separate for data for data and address rather I multiplex them together and I take these pins having the double job sometimes I use them for the address and sometimes I use for them the data 
but for data I can use only 16 bits but for address I will use the 20 bits that means 20 pins right now if you can see here we have uh, the pin from starting from this 80 0 to 80 14 that means from pin number 16 to 2 and then here 80 15 is here 39 38 37 36 35 these because this is 16 okay uh, this is one two three four five bits here okay uh, basically this is um, starting from 2 to 16 that is 15 plus 5 that is 20 so total 20 uh, lines are here and we use them bo both for address as well as data but if, if you use data we only use 16 bits but if you have address we use these 16 and also these and now you can see so this is called multiplexing we, we use the multiplexer to uh, do the job whether we want to do for data or we want to do for address so that depends on the clock cycle because we have a clock cycles in a first clock cycle uh, we use it for the address and for the next clock cycles we can use it for the data and so on and here also you know you, you can use you can see it is having double job okay uh, as s3 and s4 which is used for the segment selection we'll talk about in a while in a shortly shortly we'll talk about this thing okay uh, right now i'm talking about this thing let me go to the next slide okay now you can see here from 80 0 to 80 15 80 0 okay to 80 15 that is this guy okay that means total 16 bits uh 80 0 to 80 16 80 15 that means total 16 bits so these lines are multiplexed by direction so we say i 80 pin number 16 okay to 2 16 to 2 okay and then pin number 39 this one the red one so from 16 to 2 and then pin number 39 uh, they are bi-directional they are bi-directional means data can go from to and fro okay we need to have some ICs in between maybe like 8286 we talk about that thing later 8286 uh, we have um, we'll talk about this later okay um, what I'm saying is now they are bi-directional that means data can pass to and fro and so on so they are used for address as well as data uh, so during the first t1 they carry lower order 16-bit address okay so in the first cycle uh, the t1 clock cycle they carry lower order 16-bit address and the, in the remaining clock cycle they carry 16-bit data so if you talk about these 16 bits not these because these, these also add up with the data now uh, sorry address okay um, that's a16 a17 a18 and a19 they will also be used for the address because it makes them total 20 bit address okay but these 16 if i talk about 80s 0 80 14 to 80 15 up to 80 15 they work for in the first clock cycle they take up the lower order 16 bit address why i'm saying lower order because something is missing because for, uh, in it four bits are missing okay that is to make it 20 bit address so but i'm talking when i talk about these they talk about the lower order uh, 16 bit address and the higher order will be in these okay and then in the remaining clock cycles they act they act for the data they they can pass to or fro that means uh, from the uh, ma primary memory to the to the secondary memory maybe from uh, or from the memory to processor or processor to memory so it can go to and fro okay now then 80 0 to 87 now when in this uh, let me change the color of the pen now here 80 0 to 87 that means total 8 okay then from here to 80 14 and also this 39 bit that is 80 15 okay now this 80 0 to 87 this one they carry the lower order byte of data see for example you have talking about the ax register and you have here al and ah now these guys 80 0 to 87 will carry the low order data okay that is lower 8 bits uh, 
LSB 8 bits. Okay, now, now the 88 to 8015, that is 88 and all of them, and also this 15, they take up the higher order data like AH, right? Now, these guys, which are like A16, 17, 18, 19, these four uh, bits, four pins, okay, they're also multiplexer because sometimes we use them for the S3, S4, S5, and S6, so that's called a status bus. So I can uh, use these four bits for the status. We'll talk about that. Uh, or they can be used because I told you the address bus is 20 bits, okay? 16 already, uh, which was uh, for the 16 bits, then we need a four bit here. There the four bits are here to complete the full address, to make it 20 bit address, right? Total is 20 bit address. Uh, now 16 bit, these 16 pins will talk about these 16 bits of an address and these four pins will talk about this four, uh, the higher order four bit address, the higher order four bit address. So to make it a 20 bit address total, okay, right? And th this, this will be done um, during the first clock cycle, okay, first clock cycle because in a first clock cycle, uh, the, these pins uh, from AD 14 to AD 0, they also act as in a first clock cycle, they act as what? The, they will take about the address, the 16 bit address. And in the same clock cycle, these four bits, okay, these four pins will talk about the higher order four bits of an address to make it 16 plus four 20 bit address. Okay, 20 bit address, right? But in the next clock cycle, uh, these 16 bits uh, will talk about not the address but the data now 16 bit data and these four bits because data is only 16 bit so we will not talk about these we will, we do not require 38 37 36 and 35 pins for data because data is not 20 bits so that at that time uh, it will talk about s3 s4 s5 and s6 that is the status signal okay so so they will act as the status bus okay so, so far we're talking about the uh, 80 zero to 80 14 and these pins, pin number two to pin number A, uh, pin number 16 and pin number 39. Then these four, that pin number 38, 37, 36 and 35, okay? And they are used for the pin number two to 16, 80 zero to 80 14. They are used for exclusively for address in a first clock cycle along with these four bits and 39 pin. They're all in a first clock cycle used for to make it a 20 bit address. But in a second clock cycle, these 16 bits, and that means 8014 to 80 and also 8015, they act for in a first, uh, in, a, in a second clock cycle, they act, so this is the first clock cycle, now comes the second clock cycle, they act for the data, okay? And these four, at second clock cycle and later clock cycles act also for the status bus, okay? Now this one, that is BHE and S7, okay? BHE S7, that's pin number 34. So what, uh, what it does? Now we talk about exclusively BHE and it, it's also multiplexer as you could see, it's either BHE or S7. And BHE, if you see, there is a bar on it, BHE bar, it's kind of a complement. You must have read it in a discrete mathematics that if BHE is zero, that means it will work. It will be high because when it is zero, it will make it one. So that means signal is high. So if it is a zero signal, so it will make it a high signal. So what is BHE? It's bus high enable, bus high enable. It means bus high enable. And now you could see it is having a bar. So when it is low, basically, okay, <clears throat> then it will work. If it is high, that means BHE will be at that time zero. It will work for S7. So what, what is that? We will talk about this in a while. So, so, so if you want to work, the BHE should work, then your signal should be zero volts so that this will become high, BHE will become high because it's a bar on it, okay? So what is BHE doing is, you, it is used to indicate the transfer of data over higher order database, D8 to D15. 
So if you see D8 and to D15, that means up to D14 and pin number 39, it will activate these guys, okay? Because sometimes you have 8-bit input output devices because you have a processor and on the other sides there are 8-bit uh, input output devices and you want to talk to them. You want to talk to the 8-bit input output devices. So you will use only these bits at that moment, the higher order bits higher order 8 bits to talk to the 8 bit input output devices so that means at that time these addresses are not valid so the processor will take only into account d8 to d15 so it is only possible when the bhe signal for 34 pin has a low signal of zero now it's a low signal of zero the bhe will become high okay that means at that time the processor will talk about the uh, you know, uh, talk about the a, uh, D8 to D15 only, okay? That means uh, it has to talk to the uh, input-output devices, okay? So it is basically, uh, it indicates to transfer data over the data bus using these pins, using 8-bit data, okay? And that to higher order 8-bit data, which can be transmitted to some uh, either it can take from the input device or either it can transfer to the output device which is an 8-bit uh, device 8 put input output device and if it is high if this pin is high that means bhe will be zero at that time it will act for s7 the s7 uh, the status line is a spare line which is undefined only this line is undefined rest of all the status lines have some meaning okay so what is this bhe doing basically mm, we need to understand how the memory is uh, divided in the 8086 uh, microprocessor as you could see in this diagram the memory space in 8086 is divided into two banks you know we know we have uh, as you could see we have the 20 pins for addressing from A0 up to A19 that is 20 and we use only from A1 to A9 we don't use A0 in addressing I will tell you in a moment why and if we have a 20 bit that is 2 raised to the power 20 that's 1 megabyte of memory we can have but what we do is we have divided our memory space into 2 that is 512k of uh, into 8 bytes of one memory bank and second memory bank again 5 and 2 okay so we have divided into 5 and 2k into 8 and 5 and k into 8 so two memory banks we have total we can have uh, you know one byte and if if you say into 8 because it's in 5 and 2 into 8 so 8 bytes and it's also having 8 bytes so 8 plus 8 is 16 bytes so that our data will be 16 byte only and it is 5 and 2 and it's 5 and 2 okay long so it is 5 and 2 into 8 this is 5 and 2 into 8 so 5 and 2 into 8 this is 5 and 2 into 8 so if you see in totality it will be 2 raised to the power 20 that's 1 megabyte okay and because our data which is registers are only 16 bits so it makes sense to divide one you know of row of this as an 8 bit and one row of this as an 8 bit so total it is a 16 bit data okay but the address space means we have to you know address each and every unit of this so we need for that 20 bits to address each 5 5 and 2 um, these memory channels and 5 and 2 memory channels and this one we call as an upper odd bank and this one is called as a lower even bank so this will generate the even addresses this will generate the odd addresses so are my is my data which i'm trying to access in a memory is it in this bank or is it in this bank so who will decide it the a0 the first address pin will decide it okay, whether i have to go from the odd bank or I have to go from the even bank so that's why I'm not using zero in my addressing rather a, a zero is used for selection of memory bank okay so it in combination with BHE does some different job so what is that job 
to be done okay it has basically bhe has three outputs how many it has three outputs so in combination of with this a0 bit whatever the a0 is and also the bhe is is it 0 or 1 is a00 on 1 we will we will have four scenarios 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and this one is for bhe and this one is for a0 so what is the scenario here So what I'm saying technically is I just want to explain a little more here that I said uh, we have from 80 0 up to 80 15 then 16 17 18 19 so I will take up all of these bits okay from 2 to uh, 16 and from here 39 to here 36 total 20 bits and out of it I am using this bit 80 0 not for the address selection rather for the memory bank selection because i told you i have two memory banks okay i have divided my memory into two banks the upper and lower okay and if you see uh, the upper one uh, that is for the odd bank and this is called as the odd bank and this is the even bank so it will have the even addresses and the odd addresses both are 512 into 8 512 into 8 uh, bit, bit long okay and which memory bank to select this a0 helps in that okay a0 helps in that which memory bank i have to select and bhe tell us whether we should go for the 8 higher bit or 8 lower bit or complete 16 bit address so what should we do the bhe will tell us that so i will show it in a diagram so this is my a0 uh, okay so if a0 is 0 okay and your bhe is also low then it will take up the 16 both bytes that is 16 bits that is from the it will it, it will select all the 16 bits and so that we can access both the memory banks because i told you we have two memory banks so it can access both the memory banks now if it if the bhe is low again but a0 is 1 so that means i have to select uh only one uh, memory bank either the lower or the upper this time i will talk about the upper uh the memory bank uh, okay so either i will uh, pass something to this memory bank or either get something from it so to end from the odd addresses because these are the odd addresses but if it is bhe is now high one is high and a0 is zero okay then i am trying to access from the uh, lower uh, byte that is two or from even addresses that is these even addresses and if both are one one then i am doing nothing if bhe is one and a0 is also one then i'm doing nothing okay so so what is a0 a0 is the first uh, address bit uh, and if you see here from a1 to a19 this is my address bus and this is the a0 and a0 will select whether it is uh, if you see here when the a0 is 1 i am selecting the upper byte when a0 is 0 i am selecting the lower byte or even addresses so when a0 is 0 i am selecting the uh, even addresses so that means when a0 is 0 i am selecting this guy when a0 is 1 i am selecting this guy this memory bank and bhe will tell me should i go for the uh, should i go for it or should i not go for it because if you see the bhe if the bhe is zero if both are zero then uh, i will take the 16 byte the full address but if it is uh, zero then i take the upper byte only okay the upper byte that means this one and these eight bits because this is this consists of eight eight bit data okay this consists of 8 8 bit data that's why a0 to a18 so these actually have you know this uh, dark line this actually has the eight lines to access the eight uh, different uh, bits in this because it will have the eight bits okay now uh, that's why we have the 8 bit here and 8 bit here 16 bit data okay and the bhe will tell us whether i should uh, select the upper 
byte only or the lower byte only and in combination with the a0 the third input is the 16 bit so i will have three outputs either i will use a 16 bit or i will use 8 bit uh, upper or i will use 8 bit lower even addresses does it make sense so this upper when when this is an upper uh, i'm selecting the upper one then i will use the d0 to d7 pins only okay but if it is uh, uh, the, or a0 to a18 here if you could see this is and uh, this is also the a0 to a18 this is my uh, the address bus okay and here this is the data bus d0 to d7 and d0 to d7 again for the data bus and here it is having the lower half at, uh, half of the data bus and this is the upper half of the data bus but inside the memory bank i will have only 0 to 7 that is 8 0 to 7 that is 8 bits okay but if i have to select this one then i will use d0 to d7 to select the lower one but if i have to use this memory bank then i will use d8 to d15 pins to select the this uh, upper 512k into 8 memory bank okay does it make sense say for example you want to access data byte at an even address that is here somewhere in this uh, in this uh, memory bank okay so that means the byte is transferred to either you want to transfer to this or from this because this data bus is the bidirectional either you can pass it through the to the data and either you can uh, from this memory bank to processor or from processor to memory uh, you can do that both ways okay and you have to select address here that i want to select this memory bank only and the address in it okay that will be done by the a0 and bhe combination which i showed the table uh, shortly i uh, no i showed the table um, where it was seen that when this will be selected okay so in this case the inactive level of the a0 address bit okay so a0 address bit uh, it, it, it should have should be the inactive level it should show the inactive level uh, which enables the address byte in the lower bank okay and the inactive level of bhe signal disables the address byte in the upper bank so when this is zero for example if you look here when the bhe is one that means uh, this will be inactive because bhe is inverse and that is the complement of bhe so when the signal is one to it so that means bhe is inactive okay and a0 is also inactive in that scenario if you see a0 is also zero and bh is in fact one but uh, that will make one will make it inactive bh will make it inactive so one by one it becomes inactive right so inactive level of bh signal do, does what it disables what will it disable the address byte in the upper bank so it will disable the address byte in the upper bank and the a0 inactive basically okay will select the lower byte so get it from here that if bhe is 1 and a0 is 0 so that means what i'm saying is now bhe when the bhe is 1 okay bhe is 1 that means this is the inactive so this will disable this it will be disabled this memory chunk will be disabled so this uh, address will not happen this will not be selected and when this is zero okay it will select this one it will select uh, this memory bank okay and then vice versa happens if um, the bhe is active when the bhe will active when this will be zero this will be active so this will be selected and when this will be um, active it actually disables the lower even uh, lower even bank and upper odd bank will be selected and accordingly we will use either this uh, upper half of the data bus or lower half of the data bus so upper half will be used for the upper odd bank and lower half will be used for the lower even bank now if you see here that means your bhe is um it's it's when both are zero then uh well if, if both are zero we'll see about this but i'm talking about this when bhe is zero that means uh, it is active 
okay then it is active we are selecting the upper byte okay and when this is one okay it will disable so a0 will this because a0 goes to the uh, lower byte and bhe goes to the uh, upper byte so when the bhe is zero that means it's active it will be selected okay and when this guy is one this will be deselected so uh, on a0 is zero this will be selected but if a0 is one so that means uh, this will be deselected and this will be selected so your upper byte will be selected but if your bhe is one that means this is because bhe is uh, bhe is inverse right your one second let me draw it properly this is your a0 and this is your bhe complement right and we have one memory bank here another memory bank here and a0 goes to here and bhe goes to here so if bhe is now one that is high that means it is disabled so this will be disabled but for that a0 should be zero <coughs> this will be selected so when is this selected when a0 is equal to zero when is this selected when bhe is equal to zero so when <coughs> this is zero okay and for that this a0 should be one so when this is one this this will will not be selected so a when so when bhe is zero and a0 is one the upper uh, lower byte is not selected upper byte is selected okay upper um, uh, uh, memory bank is selected when <coughs> bhe is one so inverse of one is zero so this will not be selected and if this is zero then it will be selected now if i want to select both if I want to select, I can I can transfer data to and from full 16 uh, bits. Okay, I can use the full 16 bits. That means full memory address of the both the banks. So how I should do that? Because for that, I need to select both banks. And I know this bank will be selected only when BHE is zero, and this bank will be selected only when A A zero is zero, right? So that means when BHE is zero and A zero is zero. I will use the 16 bit transfer. I can access the both the memory banks, right? So that's why it, it, it has only the three uh, outputs. Either it will select the 16 bit, either it will select the upper uh, byte or uh, memory bank, or either it will select the lower byte or lower memory bank, the even uh, bank. Okay, but if the both are one and one, okay, when this is one, so it will be disabled definitely and when a0 is one this will be disabled so that means it's not accessing the memory right because when the bhe is one so it is disabling the lower it is lower uh, memory bank is uh, uh, sorry uh, upper odd memory bank is disabled when this is one a0 is one that means the lower uh, or even bank is disabled so i am not doing anything here right the last thing which we uh, do today is about the pin 1 and pin 40 and pin 20. If you see pin 40, this is VCC, which is actually which provides the power to the microprocessor. So we have plus 5 volt DC supply here. Okay, and it is the pin 40 which is used uh, for powering up the microprocessor. And we know with every processor we need to have um, the ground gnd is the ground that's a vss so vcc is the power supply and vss is the ground and we have two grounds here pin 1 and pin 20 they are the ground okay so remember pin 1 pin 20 is a ground pin 40 is the vcc 5 volt dc supply and we covered here from pin uh, 15 that is uh, sorry pin 16 ad0 uh, up to 2 so pin 2 to pin 16 uh, these are for the multiplexed address and data for address and data pins and also with the da 15 that is 39 pin up to the 35 but these guys are multiplexed with the status register uh, for, with the status bus okay so what is this s3 s4 what is s5 s6 doing okay s7 i told you it's it's undefined it's not used it is idle this this one is idle okay and uh, uh, this one these guys have a specific meaning 
which we will do in uh, the next video inshallah okay so hopefully you got a, uh, a little bit of it and uh, we need to explore more on it uh, because um, we need to see the latches uh, the transceivers which are attached to uh, the microprocessor and in detail then and only then we can understand what are these guys doing the minimum mode and the maximum mode of the microprocessor and we have to talk a lot of things and it's very easy but you need to have a clear concept with the diagrammatic representation so hopefully inshallah that we will do in the next uh, lecture okay see you next time until then